Hello, I'm Cam, the chair of the Hereford FA Youth Council, and today I'm joined by... I'm Dan Hoskins, I'm the Vice Chairman of the Herefordshire FA Youth Council. And I'm Anna Thomason, I'm the Designated Safeguarding Officer for Herefordshire Football Association. Right, Anna, just a nice easy icebreaker question. What is your favourite film and why? See, I've been trying to hide how old I am with my film choice <laughs> and I've been talking about it but I've got to go with a film from the 80s which is Willow I loved it with Warwick Davis Willow. that's the one yeah I've seen that one there you go right next here comes the serious questions now um question one why did you become the designated safeguarded officer at HFA right okay so my background is mainly in dance and I were, I've been a dance teacher for years and years and years but as part of my um, teacher education um, I covered a lot of safeguarding in sport so it appeared to be a no-brainer because both of my children and my husband are all heavily involved in football in Herefordshire. Uh, my, my son plays in the Junior League and for the HFA Boys Development Centre. And my daughter, the same in the Girls League and the Girls Development Centre. So it was, you know, it's great. All of us together as a family, we've all got something in common. I you know, I really, really enjoy the job. It's, it's important to keep children safe playing football. So Anna, where do you see the Youth Council going in the next six months? I've been thinking about this a lot. And it's got to go from strength to strength because it's very important for us to listen to the voice of under 18s, especially under 18s and young people in Herefordshire. So what I would like to see is members of the development centres being part of the youth council, uh, people from, you know, representatives from clubs, um, junior referees because that's the only way they're going to be able to make any changes by being part of the youth council okay this rolls on to the, it's practically the same as the next question what is your opinion of youth leadership right so I think it's vital for the development of young people it, it gives them uh, leadership leadership skills, uh, you know, decision making, goal setting, problem solving. And those are great things to learn as a young person for going out there when you're going getting a job, when, you know, education's come to an end, the, you know, the things that people are looking for. And there's nothing greater is there than learning those skills in football. So, Anna, what has been your favourite um, thing that the Youth Council has done in the last 12 months? I've got two things. I've got two <laughs> things. <laughs> OK, so my first one has to be the podcast because it's so different. It's so different. It's not something we've ever done. Um, you know, you've modernised us. You've made us relevant. Um which is really, you know, it's great. It's great and it's come from you guys yourselves. It's not us pushing that. Um, but equally, I am impressed with the relationship that you've built up with the staff at the HFA, you know, doing this, what we're doing now, talking about it, you know, finding out about how the HFA works, talk, taking the time out to find out how differently our job, how different our jobs are and the different approaches we all take to, um, our work and it's you know that's important and hopefully this building up this relationship and the podcast will increase the amount of particip participation rather that we get with the youth council hopefully right. mm -hmm. next next question is what would be your message to a young person who is thinking about joining the hfa youth council do it do it you know, we have, uh, we've been putting out quite a few surveys online 
And it's very, very obvious that there's lots of young people with um, opinions on changes that we need to make in football. And it's okay filling out a survey, but this is the way you can make the changes. You can make a difference by being part of the youth council, you know, instead of, you know, sitting there and moaning about it, <laughs> you know, join us, help us. It's, the, you know, it's the only way we can improve things. Have you watched the podcast series? If you have, what was your favourite episode and why? The first one on disability it wasn't specific it wasn't the subject matter it was the fact that it was the first one and it was wow look what we look what we're doing um, i thought that was impressive but it was really great to hear everybody talking about the challenges that they've faced and how they've overcome them that it hasn't defeated you that you've carried on, you know, despite what you've despite what you faced and the behaviours towards you. And equally, I was listening to what Ethan was saying. I recapped again yesterday how, and all of you actually, how you've adapted to be part of football and adapted in in life to to carry on. I, lo I love that everyone kept saying, "But we're normal." We're normal. <laughs> and it was, you know, it, it shouldn't be viewed any other way. Let's, you know, but it, I, I think it's really important for young people to see that because we've got so many young people involved in football that could be going through all sorts, especially with the challenges that we've faced in the last year. I think it would be really great for them to see that, look, we've been there, we've got through it, we've adapted and we're still going strong. <laughs> would, so would you like to see a second series? Of course I would. Of course I would, yeah. Who's the biggest legend at HFA, out of the team, and who's that one member of staff that brings it the smiles and when everyone's feeling down? Part one, legend, Paul Cotton. Because if any of us have got a problem, everybody goes to Paul. If you want an email check-in, if you've done something wrong, if you're not quite sure of something, Paul will always give you some form of answer. And he, he you know, and he won't let everybody know that you've no idea what you're doing sometimes. <laughs> he, he saves you bacon. He definitely saves you bacon. And I hate to do this, but the person who puts a smile on everybody's face is Scott. We knew it. <laughs> we, knew, we knew we knew that somebody was going to say it a lot of the team have said it but he is so much fun and we yeah yeah we know that because yeah. he's our staff leader and, that, and the fact that he's um applied for leadership academy this year is going to be if he gets in it's going to be so much fun yeah he's, he's, he's he never stops even from the cleaners <laughs> to the, you know, pitch attendance, anybody visiting, everyone, it's just everybody gets welcomed with the same, hi, how are you? You know, he talks to everybody like he's known them his whole life. He does. And, you know, he just, he does team meetings, um, you know, woe betide if you've done something ridiculous online, Scott will make a fool of you. And everybody laughing in a team meeting and ridiculous images of you'll be appearing <laughs> on, in, in his background for teams. And I think you saying that he kept everybody going, he kept the youth council going because we decided very early on that we wanted to keep going, hence why we went online very quickly. A lot of other youth councils around England didn't. So I okay. think the fact that he was willing to support us with that has yeah. been the thing that's kept us all going because as you'll know all of the youth council have or, or most of us have got disabilities so the fact that a lot of us have shielded or haven't been out very much in the last year he's been that one constant that's kind of always been there Anna thank you ever so much for sitting down with us you're the penultimate interview that we've got to do we've got one more after um, yours but thank you ever so much for taking the time out 
Um, Thanks, guys. It's for, been a pleasure. For sitting with us. And we've learned so much about you, hopefully. And the fact that you're a Manchester City supporter doesn't bother us.